Hey everybody, I'm Matt Finish, and welcome back to the Terraria Dwarf Challenge playthrough. Now, uh, I've done a little bit of upgrading uh, to myself and to the home, as I'm going to show you here in a second. But uh, I want to let you know I did change out my reflective gold die for reflective copper die. And I had to sell it because, well, good reason here, I'm going to show you in a second. As we come on back down here, here's my new glass clock. But uh, over here, right here, my little tinkerer's bench. This allows me to combine all my accessories that uh, I'm able to combine together. Haven't done anything like that yet, but uh, we'll get there. Also, I made myself a heavy workbench so I can start making some uh, other furniture items. And uh, if you saw here real quick, well, a couple things. Can I walk over this way a second? Down here is Durnok, my goblin tinkerer. Obviously the person who sold me the bench. But uh, I've also gone ahead, I went a little bit deeper in my, my search for uh, ores and items, and I managed to make myself an obsidian skull. It's lucky too, so that's kind of nice. Uh, but what this does is it makes me immune to fire blocks. Fire blocks such as the meteor. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually finish that out as soon as I talk to the traveling merchant who just showed up. Ooh, your timing is great. Alright, let's go down here see what he's see what he's got. Do 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 I don't meet you behind Steve's house. Alright. He has a DPS meter, which I already have. A stopwatch, which I did already buy. He's got ultra bright torches though. Oh I love these things. Um I'm gonna buy about twenty. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to. I like those things. When I get more money, I'm definitely going to buy a couple stacks. So, alright, so first thing we're going to do, because we got a bunch on the docket today, I'm going to take you down this way, and we're going to go to the Meteor, and we're going to finish farming that up. And then, while we're over there, i got some other things I want to take a look at. So, uh, I'll meet you guys over there in just a second. Alright, guys. Uh, here I am. I'm actually at the dungeon. But uh, I thought about this as I was coming over here and climbing this. But I want to let you know, uh, for anybody who's new, if you're always kind of worried where the uh, the dungeon spawns, because the dungeon never spawns on the same side all the time. Uh, but if you're ever curious where it spawns, there's a couple things you need to know. One, dungeons will always spawn on the same side as the uh, snow biome. So if your snow biome is on the left side of your world, your dungeon is going to be on the left side of your world. The other thing you need to know is that with uh, the dungeon being on the same side as the snow, uh, whatever side those are on, the jungle, which we haven't been to yet, is actually on the opposite side of the world. So for us, our jungle is going to be on the left side of the world this time. And uh, that's probably where we're going to try to go next because we probably want to fight the boss there before we fight the dungeon boss. Mainly because I, I need some particular upgrades from uh, that boss. So, yeah. Anyways, here's the rest of the, the meteor. As you can see, I'm actually on a meteor block right now, and I'm just standing on it. No big deal, not getting hurt at all. Very helpful for uh, mining out this kind of stuff. Also helpful when uh, we get down to the, uh, the lowest levels, the underworld, and we have to uh, mine out the hellstone there. I'm going to try and fight these guys off with my pick and not do a good job. Oh, well. Meteorites will constantly spawn. Or meteor heads, I should say. Uh, while you're trying to mine the meteorite, it's very annoying. So if you got bombs, which I forgot to bring, always make sure you have some. And uh, another tip for the, the new people. Uh, if you are trying to farm this out and you're... Uh, worried about the meteor heads uh, eventually you don't have to worry about them after a certain point what will happen is after well let's say it this way every biome in the game and this is considered a meteor biome by the way but every biome in the game begins at 50 blocks so if you have 50 blocks of a certain biome you can make a biome anywhere so if I take this and I save 50 meteorite, not refining it or anything, just straight up meteorite, and I save it, put it up somewhere, these guys will start spawning. 
Um, that used to be u really useful for people who are trying to farm stuff in hard mode. I uh, believe they fixed that so it doesn't do that anymore. So you can't get the hard mode items off of these guys. But uh, if you're looking for meteorite because you want some meteor bullets or... I don't know. You like making face sabers? Because... <laughs> Then this is a, a neat little trick you can do. So, come on. Ooh, meteor head. I'm going to throw that banner up here real quick. What the banners do, if I haven't explained that, is they give you increased damage against the target and increased defense against the target. So, I'll do more damage and they'll do less damage. Which, yeah, kind of the same thing. Said it twice. Whatever. It's been a crazy day, so my brain ain't fully, fully awake, fully there anymore. But whatever. I'm gonna dig out as much of this as I can, at least until the meteor head stops spawning. One thing I do like about the the meteorite is it's very uh, illuminatory. <laughs> Making up words, but uh. It, it's, it's very bright. It, it gives off its own light source, and that's very helpful um, if you're ever trying to, like, build something, and you want some illumination, and you don't like the look of the torches, or at least you don't want them for the aesthetic that you're making, consider using a meteorite. Just don't go over 50, and you should be okay. Or actually, don't go to 50, because the minute you go to 50, that's when they show up. Look at that. And this meter is very kind enough to show me that there's a cave down here. And we can explore that later. Right now. We want to get this. Oh, it looks like they stopped coming. Okay. Now I want to finish exploring the right side of the world here. Which is always fun to do at night. We're going to try. <laughs> and they all jump in the pit. All right, this hammer is really awesome, doing a good job for me. But yeah, I kind of came over here because I was looking for, uh, I believe I was looking for strange plants. And uh, just because I wanted some new dyes. And the reason why you're not going to see the reflective gold dye anymore is because I sold it. Because uh, I needed the gold to buy that uh, tinkerer's table. Because it's expensive. <laughs> At least early game, it's, it's 10 gold. So, all right, here's the ocean. Now, I'm going to show, him, show it on the map here. This is the edge of the world. This is where the ocean goes. Oceans always belong at the edge of the world. Now, normally, the slope doesn't go all the way to the back here. But this time it did. And, oh. Hang on. I knew I heard him. I was gonna... People are being rude as I'm trying to explain things. All right. Well, and the flat places in the ocean, you'll sometimes see chests. And over here is a water chest. And mine just happens to be at the very edge of the world. <sighs> now, I loot, managed to loot everything out of it, but I drowned. So, did I take the breathing rod with me? I did. I got this breathing reed. What this does is it expands my, uh, my ability to swing a weapon but it lets me breathe underwater a lot longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this. Oh, I can't do that. Oh. Uh, okay, Mr. Shark. I did not expect you to show up. You have yourself a lovely day. I'm going to go this way. Back out of the water. You leave me alone. That's right, you get. Haha. <laughs> And, yeah, sharks show up. And they eat your face. Alright, try to be quick here. I'm not going to be. Just kind of hoping to run down here. Without sharks. And grab this chest. So I at least have an extra chest. Because you can never have enough. And there's a shark there. Oh my goodness. Go away, dude. See, there's my other tombstone. There's my water chest. 
Oh, man. Okay, well... I'll get back to that stuff on a later date. One thing I did want to show... I should have stopped and done that instead, but I'm going to bring my map over here real quick. Is here. So here's where the meteor was, right? See this little line right here? For anybody who doesn't know, this is the marker on the world to let you know that there is a shrine somewhere down here. It could be like further down, it could be closer up, who knows. In those shrines, you get one of three things. Uh, you get the enchanted sword, which is uh, a melee weapon that for pre-hard mode is really powerful because it actually shoots magic out but uses melee damage, so if you have like something that buffs your melee, it's really powerful. Uh, it gives you a weapon, an incredibly rare weapon called the Arcalis, which is just very short range, but very rapid fire. Uh, I've never gotten one, and so I wanted to see if I was actually going to get one. I'm just going to check for stars here while I'm talking about this. Um, but yeah... The third thing you can get is absolutely nothing. And that's usually more up my speed. But <laughs> I wanted to at least check that area out, but we'll come back to that. We'll cut to that. Um, but I figure we'll change we'll change the pace a little bit. And I'll finish showing you the rest of the home. So, as you can see, I did take... I said this before, but I took the, the extra house out because we don't need it. I'm probably going to expand Steve's room a little more just so I can put some things in there I, want, I need from him. I have uh, haven't done much up here. Norson lives here. I figured little blue man, little blue light works perfect. And down here, there's the dryad. She moved in down there. Mario the painter moved down here. I went ahead and I finished these homes up. Oh, I was going to show that for last, but whatever. I've gone ahead and I've added more pillars, as you can see, and I put some chandeliers up, and then I took these home, or th this area right here, and I just carved it out, and made this for two rooms. So like I said before, these little uh, wood platforms count as a door, so these are two separate bedrooms, or living quarters, for two other NPCs. And then I just kind of went a little fancy, went a little fancy, and I stopped here. And this is where I'm going to leave the bottom of my my home. I'm not going to go f b below that. I, I really don't want to do that. But uh, yeah, let's go over here real quick. I replaced the chandelier in here for glass light because glass lights are awesome. And I wanted the chandelier for the hallways. This is what I wanted to show you. This guy is Izzy the Angler. Now, Izzy the Angler uh, likes, to, likes to fish. He's a little kid, and uh, you find him when you go to the ocean. He comes floating in, asleep. You wake him up, and uh, you leave him off screen, or walk off screen, and he'll show up here. And he'll live here with everybody else now. And then I went and moved uh, Xavier, the arms dealer, up here into this room. I don't know who's going to be his roommate, but uh, they're going to have times. But yeah, I just wanted to show you, this is kind of the... This is the end of the pre-hard mode build. Uh, the reason I say that is, um, I actually had somebody ask me in the comments, uh, how many NPCs can you get in the game? And I had to look it up to verify it myself, because I knew it was a lot. Uh, but it turns out that if you're on the PC, there's 19 NPCs who will show up before you defeat the Wall of Flesh. So I've made 19 rooms. When you get into hard mode, uh, another six people will show up for a total of 25. And then if it's Christmas, Santa will show up, so he needs a place to live too. So if you want to have a place for everybody in your world, when you go to make homes, make homes for 26 people. And, uh, yeah. I really feel bad about Humphrey sitting here in this tiny room. I'm going to have to expand this eventually. But... I just keep forgetting. And, uh... Take a look here at the Dryad. Dryad now sells Daybloom planter boxes because we killed King Slime. 
I believe the Blink Root came from Eye of Cthulhu, and then Deathweed came from the Eater of Worlds. Uh, Killing the Jungle Boss gives you the Moonglow Planner Box, and I believe Killing the Dungeon Boss gives you the Shiverthorn and the Waterleaf. I believe it gives you both. So. And the last thing, the most important thing, I went ahead and I updated and I organized all of my boxes. So. My shark fins can now go in my creature parts. And my tombstones can now go in the blank statue uh, parts. Now, the, uh, the statues are very important. And uh, once we get to the dungeon, you'll see why. But uh, this area over here... I'm thinking I'm going to turn into... Hmm. I'm still arguing with myself about it. I'm either going to expand the planter box area some more and just keep them all up here. Which would probably be the smart thing to do. But then I need to make an engine room. And uh, if you don't know what an engine room is, hang tight. Keep watching these episodes. i got to keep you enticed somehow. But yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead... I'm going to cut again, and this time when we cut back in, we're going to be over at the left area of the world that we stopped moving. See, so yeah, I kind of went a little bit further, but we're going to stop here. I'm going to meet over here with you guys, and then we're going to continue uh, west and uh, see what happens. So see you soon. All right, and we're back here. Mash. Okay. Hey, as you see, water leaf seeds. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, certain plants will bloom at certain times. Uh, day blooms will bloom during the day. Moon glow will bloom during the night. Uh, water leaf will bloom uh, when it rains. And what that means is you can harvest these at any point, but when they bloom, they'll drop their seeds as well. So it's a great way to constantly harvest them. So if it's raining as the dirt during the daytime, you can harvest day bloom and water leaf. Uh, Deathweed will there we go. Get that. Uh, Deathweed will bloom during a blood moon, so you always got to be uh, mindful of that. If you really <laughs> want to get some and you don't have a planter box, go to the corruption or the crimson, whichever you got during a blood moon. And have fun with that, because nah, I'm not doing that for you. <laughs> Alright. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and put my ultra bright torches up here, because I just want to use them to look. See how much brighter that is? Boom. There it goes. Oh, well, that could get thrown out. Mining potions, recall potions. I love seeing those right now. Because I've not seen my magic mirror. Really kind of annoyed by that. But oh well. Let's keep moving. This jungle's around here somewhere. And I'm moving faster, but... Aha! Here we go. I can tell we're getting to the jungle because this is mahogany. Boom. Now, the jungle's actually one of the tougher areas in pre-hard mode, so just, you know, be careful when you come in here. Uh, especially if you don't have any uh, way to deal with poison, which you pretty much won't as you come through the jungle the first time. Let's see what's down here. Okay. And these flying fish are annoying. Luckily, they're preventing uh, most of the jungle spawns from coming out. Oh. So sick of blowpipes. I, I know some people like hate the flare gun. I hate the blowpipe. Blowpipe is the dumbest, <laughs> dumbest weapon. Because basically, it doesn't allow you the, the freedom of chopping grass without collecting ammo for your blowpipe. Your blowpipe doesn't even have to be equipped in your bar up here. It just has to be in your inventory. Oh, there's a jungle slime. Okay. I say we go down. We're going to venture in to the jungle. Y 
Yeah. We're going to venture in for a little bit here. At least go to the, the, the very first area we can. See if there's homes. Ooh. Oh, jungle bat. Get away. They're fast and they hit hard. Ooh, more recall potions. I am so glad I'm seeing recall potions. Gimme. You guys are too precious. I lost one already. Alright, we gotta go back to the normal torches. Yeah, we got 52 of them. Alright. Oh, yeah. I ended up getting a, a money trough during a blood moon. Check this out. Hit. A little flying pig. When you right click him, he's your piggy bank. I don't ever have to worry about losing money and stuff again. Well, until I do something really stupid, but that's for a different episode, probably. Hopefully. No more stupid stuff this episode. Okay? Okay. Don't mind me as I make deals with myself. Alright. Jungle is also a great place uh, for the fishermen. Uh, or the people who decide they want to go fishing. Just because uh, you can find a lot of uh, grubs and bugs. And uh, they have way better fishing power than certain bugs already. So don't be afraid to come down here. Just understand that things can kick your butt very quickly down here if you're not paying attention. Oh, I think I see something. Could just be the glare off my TV. My TV's got that power. Yeah. Well, let's keep going. And it's just... Okay. Alright, well, I don't want to leave you guys empty-handed because, you know, we've at least done something. Ooh! A snatcher! This is one of the reasons why things get tough around here. These guys go through walls. And they're the one of two problems in the jungle. The other problem is the hornets. And there's plenty of them. Go on down. Whoops. Didn't mean to wake him up or take him off. Ooh, okay, there we go. We at least have something. So two things to bring up here. One, this little hornet nest here, if you hit it, it will fall, it will break, and it will summon a bunch of bees to try and kill you. So watch out for those. Secondly, we got more life. About time. All right. And yes, trees do grow underground here. Uh, the only difference is when you chop these guys down, uh, nothing, gr no other trees can grow back in their place. Uh oh. Ah, bees! Not the bees! Okay. Get up here. There we go. And yes, I'm not the bee, I know. I'm, I'm lame. Go away. That's not a thing. Okay. Anything down this way? No? Maybe? We have a very underwater jungle here. Oh, man. Alright, this looks like this is going to be a little bit more of an adventure than I'm planning for. So, I'm going to cut this episode here. Sorry if it's a little short. Uh, I am going to do my best to uh, start editing these more often. I do have the, the hardware to do so now. A lot ha I'm a lot happier with uh, my production quality which uh, you'll start seeing in my Hollow Knight series so just be patient with that guys but anyhow I hope you guys will uh, enjoy what you've seen so far today I hope I'm giving you guys a lot of information if you guys got terraria questions for me go ahead and ask them I don't know if I can give you every answer but I'll definitely do my best and uh, if you like the video please hit that like button and if you uh, want to know more about what I got coming down in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Send up those notifications. You'll know exactly when stuff's coming up. All right, guys. Have a fantastic day.
Later.